Hello chess friends and welcome to Azad of Chess Channel and welcome to our London System series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from White's perspective and today we're continuing the London System series with a very very annoying uh, setup that Black can play. It's the Queen to C7 followed with Bishop to D6 setup. The main goal about the move Queen to C7 followed with Bishop to D6 is of course the battle for the E5 square. The E5 is always uh the square that we're battling for and today i decided to show you a really instructive chess game played by magnus carlson i promised you that we'll cover uh, in the london system series really really many games by played by the world champion magnus because in my opinion he's really the best london system player maybe even in chess history he plays this opening in su such a great level i think uh, he has such a great opening preparation and the game that, that i wanted to show you today it's a theoretical novelty basically by uh magnus carlson and he introduced this ther theoretical novelty on his banter blitz sessions uh, he's playing of course on chess 24 uh uh, although this game was a blitz game but this was a perfect chess game played by magnus carlson he can really do that sometimes i've even covered one game in which he played a bullet game without inaccuracies mistakes and blunders so this game is almost a per really perfection and uh, magnus introduced really a great uh, theoretical novelty i think you should use it sometimes because uh, he played that against um, against a 2600 rated player that's not the point but this line i think we can use in order to beat this queen to c7 line i of course will explain what's all about what are the main strategical and tactical ideas and how i should uh, play this one so uh, here uh, d4 played by magnus his opponent i'm really not sure what's his name uh, i don't want to use his uh, name on chess 24 because it's not the point that i want to disrespect someone or uh, it's just the point that we are studying really some great lines and i think uh, this line is perfectly fine so here bishop to f4 the accelerated london system played by magnus we have knight to f6 e3 and now c5 if you want to get a better understanding uh, about the setups please please watch the series from the beginning uh, part one in production video part two three and so on uh, i've explained also many great uh, strategical ideas and tactical ideas in the london system so um, this series i recommend you always to watch from the beginning so c5 we have c3 the normal london system setup uh, the bishop is out we're building then the fortress on dark square so here e6 and now knight from b to d2 so very important move uh, staying flexible with this knight we don't want to expose our knight immediately and now comes this idea bishop to d6 and here my recommendation is not to retreat immediately with the move uh, bishop to g3 it is a possibility but magnus goes knight to f3 the main goal of course always in these types of setups is to get the control of of the e5 square so now comes this line queen to c7 the main goal about this line is to play knight from uh, b to d7 and then break the position in the center with the move e4 a5 and this is not a bad choice by black i think uh, it's really playable i when i faced the london system i tried it really this line because the problem uh, for black is if you for instance retreat here bishop to g3 then maybe knight to c6 happens then we can take out this pawn that's the tricky part of uh, white setup uh, white has here maybe uh, sort of a trap now we have we have grabbed the pawn maybe something after like bishop to g3 h6 g3 maybe knight to e7 attacking the pawn but now the queen comes very very actively into the game if uh, bishop to d7 happens we can even try queen to f4 and again we recapture maybe with the pawn g takes f4 if the queens are are, are off the board but again i think we can use uh, here the dark squares all over the board in order to attack black's position so it's a very tricky line but black doesn't have to play it like this after bishop to g3 uh, pardon me queen to c7 and bishop to g3 here i think um, black has the opportunity to play knight from b to d7 and still uh, leave the connection between the queen and the pawn that's the most important thing about this setup and now you see e5 is already a threat so that's why i think this line by magnus carlson that he is now introducing is very interesting and it's uh, basically a theoretical novelty he plays d takes c5 so it's really a great move uh, because what to do you cannot take of course uh with the bishop your queen is hanging if you take with the queen then we can face a knight to b3 and then maybe knight to e uh, knight to d4 setup still we can occupy uh, really this 
uh, dark position in, in black position so here his opponent tried bishop to f4 but now comes the tricky part i think that we can use it to move queen to a4 the check and this t we can take out the bishop again uh very very nice so he, if queen to f4 again happens again e takes f4 we're up a pawn uh, we can occupy again the e5 we can even protect maybe the uh, the pawn on c, uh, c5 with the move knight to b3 so great great uh, theoretical novelty i think by magnus he introduced it in a blitz game uh, so here after the move bishop to d7 magnus took a uh, queen takes c5 but again what we can notice uh, that black is continuing like many times in these setups with a, a weak light square bishop the light square bishop is a bad piece it's uh, simply blocked out by its own pawns our bishop is perfectly fine still has a good activity if we place it on d3 then it has of course the control of two very active diagonals so in the game magnus played bishop to d3 casting in now e4 simply breaking the position in the center very brave decision by magnus but it's a really a normal idea because we want to get a very nice activity with all of our pieces and you see now after uh, d takes e4 knight to e4 black doesn't want to risk this idea that uh, white pushes the pawn on e5 uh, kick away the knight could be really risky so that's why uh, black has to take knight takes e4 knight takes e4 but now queen to e4 we see we have a double uh, attack against the weak pawn on h7 and also against the weak pawn on b7 so really really interesting line um, that i found by play by magnus carlson as i said we should really study uh, this opening uh, while watching more and more magnus carlson games he's really the master in this opening he'll hear g6 post played and now queen to b7 bishop to uh, c6 attacking the queen and now we are going into a simplified line because we have grabbed the pawn it's a pragmatic idea we know that magnus carlson is a pragmatic player he when he feels that uh, he can go into a favorable end game he will do that he doesn't have to play a tactical game that's why i love really to watch his games uh chess is not all about tactics i think magnus carlson shows all, always really great end game skills and great uh, positional understanding of particular uh, positions so that's why i think here going into a favorable end game is perfectly fine because after trades of queens we have queen takes b4 c takes b4 we have a three versus one situation on the queen side and magnus goes into an end game and what black does now is of course perfectly logical because bishop takes f3 g takes f3 at least provokes some kind of a weakness but we have here a four versus three situation uh, on the king side and the problem is now the pawns are on both sides and magnus is going into a favorable end game with the bishop against the knight and when the pawns are on both sides it's better to have the bishop so when the pawns would be maybe on one side the knight is perfectly fine but uh, the bishop as i always like the same end games is a long range piece so now we can use the bishop all over the board and simply push our pawns here uh, we can create a pass pawn situation and it's perfectly fine so knight to c6 we have um, uh, a3 by magnus knight to uh, e5 we have king to uh, e2 very important move if you play knight takes d3 king to d3 okay you can play some checks uh, but uh, the king is in the center which is good uh, which is good to have uh, because the game is now into an, uh, is uh, went into an end game and now the king in the center is perfectly fine we can hide our king maybe here to b3 trade off some rooks and go uh, into the situation with three versus one pawn uh, here on the queen side so taking out um, uh, the bishop is not a good idea it's uh, simply a bad, uh, bad choice for black it's um, simplifying the position for white in the game rook to b8 was played rook to c1 now of course uh, a5 and now magnus goes bishop to e4 because if you take a takes b4 then we can uh, can go here a4 and we can still have this very important pass pawn and you see the bishop is aiming here on the square a8 so we have really really clear path for our pawn so in the game after the move bishop to e4 his opponent tried f5 bishop to c6 again uh, magnus wants to go into simplified variation we have uh, a takes b4 but now a4 very important to get this pass pawn we can even support it with b3 if b3 by black happens then the pawn is again on a light square we can cement here the position and still this is a very very annoying point to handle uh we can play rook to c3 and also attack the weakness what our main goal in this types of position is to create two connected pass pawns if that happens then the game is lost for black so after the move uh, a4 we have rook to uh, c8 and now bishop to b5 simply for forcing 
a further simplification on the board uh, trading of the rooks rook to d8 black doesn't want to do that and now you see you see now how magnus plays uh, perfectly this end game rook to c5 every move is really a great great end game move rook to, uh, here knight to f7 simply pushing further a6 uh, rook to a7 rook to c1 doubling up the rooks and now bishop to d3 uh, getting this position this opposite attack between the knight and the bishop always controlling uh, the knight that the knight can never jump on our side of the board that the knight cannot be active in the game uh, king to f7 rook to c7 now trading off the rooks and now again using the best active score on the board again rook to c6 playing very actively with the rook now king to e7 rook to uh, b6 uh, of course if the knight moves then also the threat is to play rook to b7 in the game Rook to a7 was played, and now Magnus grabs another pawn. It, it's basically game over. We have accomplished what we wanted to do. We have a two connected pass pawns in an endgame. Uh, now our main goal is to connect the pawn somewhere here on b5, and it's game over. So in the game, uh, king to d7, rook to d4, attacking the knight, simply f4. We have... Um, uh, king to c5 and now king to e3 and magnus really knows how to play with his king we have uh, uh, knight to b5 rook to c4 attacking the uh, king and now rook to c8 getting behind but now again for uh, a pin here by magnus rook to d8 and now we have uh, the opportunity to push simply further uh, b4 we have e takes f4 king to f4 nothing dramatically has changed here on the king side there's simply no much uh, not so much time uh, to create here a pass pawn situation you still have to worry about your uh, two connected pawns over here on the queen side so in this position uh, magnus opponent resigned so as i said although it was a blitz game this was almost a perfection uh, maybe it wasn't the most attractive game but i think this is a very important line for us to memorize uh, this idea let's go back uh, here uh, bishop to, uh, bishop to d6 now d takes c5 uh, with his queen to c7 setup as i said black's main goal is here to play knight from b to d7 and then break the position with the move e e5 if that happens if you allow your opponent this from black's perspective i think black will have a comfortable game here let's go back here if knight from d to uh, b to d7 and then e4, e5 happens i think black has at least equalized the position in an early stage of the game which is of course his goal when he plays against uh, against the london system so as i said here i think d takes c5 bishop to f4 and now you have this tactic you can trade off more pieces and go really into simplify line e4 uh, bishop to d3 and then e4 really really great um opening preparation here by the world champion magnus okay uh, i hope that you realize these ideas and i hope that you uh enjoy this game if you want to study more the london system check out my series uh here's the link please watch it from the beginning so uh, uh, introduction video part one part two and so on we have covered many uh, lines how to play the london system against uh particular defenses that uh, black can choose and if you have troubles maybe to play as black check out my king's indian and dimso indian defense series in which i show you also nice and effective way how to play against uh, d4 and if you like this content you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course